So you may have noticed that there's a whole gang of um, reprobates sitting by the stage or standing by it. Um, they've got one thing in common, and that one thing is that they all have the commit bit um, to the Selenium project, and they can basically do whatever they want with the code base because we haven't segmented the, the thing. Um, very few of them have gone completely drunk with power, although many of them have been drunk before. <laughs> um, so I think what we're going to do, just to round out the, the conference, is a question and answer session. Like, I know that you know, some of you have um, got questions that you really want to have answered, like, where do babies come from? We can actually answer that question. <laughs> At least now we can, yeah. Um, or, you know, if there's anything about the future of the project or the past of the project, you want to hear, like, war stories or things like that, now's a chance to ask. Um, gentlemen, hopefully all these microphones are working, and we've got two lapel mics between us, and, and there's this one here, which is amazingly sensitive. Christian is, uh, we, we thought he was too helpful. Um, and so what we did is we bundled him onto a plane. Go in the middle. He's um, winging his way back to Oslo. So I guess, guys, if you want to answer a question, just get near a mic. Yeah, just stand near a mic and it'll all be good. Um, does anyone want one of these? No. No. Where's Kevin? Okay. Um, so you all know how the microphones in the seats work. Kevin, come and join us. It's, it's <laughs> Kevin has just pointed out that this is a ton of people. Yes. It is a ton of people. Um, I think maybe, does everyone know who everyone on this stage is? OK. I'll start, and we'll just go down the line until we end with, with the beardy bloke on the end. Um, we bookended this, this group with beards, I see. Um, I'm Simon Stewart. Uh, I'm the current project lead. I invented WebDriver. Uh, I'm Kevin Menard. I work primarily with Selenium Grid, and I'm one of the few people that still likes Selenium RC. <laughs> uh, I'm Santiago Sarsalanias. I work at Sauce right now. Um, I started working on documentation first, and I do just all sorts of random stuff from like I added the CSS part of Selenium IDE and just fixes to RC and whatever comes up. So. Hi, uh, I'm Ryan Seri. I'm uh, in Simon's uh, team in uh, Google London. I work uh, as you. Uh, we've seen on the um, native events a lot and um, some of the um, internal bits inside Google. So um, if you have infrastructure questions, I'm happy to answer. I reckon if you project, you can stand upright when you're yeah. near those things. Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Jim Evans. Uh, I uh, work for Salesforce.com and uh, I work on the project on the uh, Internet Explorer driver and the .NET bindings. And that's what I do. Hi, I'm Yari Bokin. Uh, I work on the Ruby bindings. I wrote the Ruby bindings. Uh, yeah, that's what I do. He wrote the Ruby bindings in like two hours. <laughs> Hi, I'm, I'm Francois Renault. I'm working for eBay and I'm working on the grid piece. Hello, uh, I'm Andreas. Um, I work at Opera and I've been working with the Opera driver for a couple of years. So uh, that's what I do. Hi, I'm Daniel Wagner Hall. I work with Simon at Google. I wrote, I think, two of the worst five Chrome drivers. <laughs> um, I, I set up our continuous integration and I jump around the code base trying not to break things too much. I'm Samit Badal and uh, I'm the current owner of the Selenium ID along with Dave who is hiding out there. He doesn't want to show his face. I don't know why, but yeah, we, we take care of things that no one else wants to touch. <laughs> and we try not to break things. Occasionally, Simon screams, you've broken something. <laughs> but I, I can only say that because Daniel has a continuous integration. <laughs> I'm uh, Jason Nuggins. I created Selenium Core. And the, my default answer is yes. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now you've met everyone. Um, I think we've got every part of the code base covered <laughs> and the entire lifetime of it. So uh, are there any questions? If there are no questions, <laughs> why aren't there any questions? OK. Um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end with what I started with in a conversation with you. I am not voting for this, but I want people in this room to hear about HTTP status codes so we can stop getting upvotes for it. OK. Uh, HTTP status codes. No. 
<laughs> it's not going to happen. And the reason for that is we're a browser automation framework. Can you rephrase the question? OK. Um, so there is a long-standing feature request um, for WebDriver to somehow magically, the WebDriver APIs, to collect HTTP status codes <coughs> and hand them back um, to, to people on demand. Um, and I'm not adding that to the APIs, uh, mainly because we're a browser automation framework. And if you're really interested in the HTTP traffic, you should be putting a proxy in the way or taking advantage of you know, something like the Chrome DevTools or something like that. There are mechanisms that are already available <coughs> for you to get that information. Um, adding it to the API opens it up to being the thin end of the wedge. And you know, the Selenium RC had an organically grown API. Uh, and one of the things it allowed you to do was modify HTTP responses on the fly and all sorts of craziness. And it's like, well, that's breaking like the roles and responsibilities thing, right? So it would be assuming too many roles and responsibilities for the project. And to be fair, it takes this many people to keep what we've got up and running. Um, we could add more stuff in, but then we'd need even more people. And I know we spent six hours uh, on, on Monday teaching people how the code base works and stuff like that. But um, not everyone can afford that level of, of time and investment. Um, so it's not going to happen. Anyone else? <laughs> does, it, so yeah, does anyone else want to contradict? I have a small tip. Um, I fully agree with Simon, but Thank you. if right. this is excruciatingly important, you can always just bring the status code in part, as part of the document and, and just pull it out of there, whatever. No, I'm just sort of tired of seeing the issue flit across my, you know, the, the, the radar. So. Yeah. You can mute it. No excuses from anyone in here is to keep upvoting it. Yeah, but I, I think what Simon is saying is also quite important because there are other tools for doing this. So um, virtually any brow uh, all the browsers are getting shipped with, with debuggers, and this information is already available inside of the debuggers. Um, Chrome is exposing uh, the debug protocol uh, to JSON. Uh, Opera is doing the same through Scope, so the information is available. Uh, and you can get that by querying the protocols. So uh, the question is whether that, that should be another library or whether it should be like included in an HTTP library or whatever. Or, but the libraries are there and the information is there. But the question is just how you get it. Anyone else? Okay. So there's been a significant amount of evolution from uh, Selenium 1 to 2. Where do you guys see Selenium 3? Does anyone want to answer that before I have an opinion? Hold <laughs> 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 um, Yes, I was just going to say something. Like the, um, Stand near a microphone and say it. Then you don't need to shout. Yes. Uh, I think if anything, someone's going to be the selenium of mobile. You saw Dante's list of all the things that are trying to test apps. Uh, I think our general feeling is like, well, selenium should be the selenium of mobile. So that's pro like we've got some stuff there, but it's early on and it's not like totally kick ass, amazingly awesome. So I think three is going to be ta da! Mobile is on. I think like done. That's my view of things. And then I think you've got some kind of thoughts around deprecation, but I'll just let you talk about that. Uh, yeah. So I mean, the other thing that comes up is I think for the, what we're attempting to do right now. <clears throat> We're pretty, we've, we've refined the APIs pretty much as far as they're going to go. Like, I can't see anything coming along and being radically different. It'll be, you know, a different flavor of the same taste. Um, I hope that makes no sense, but hey, metaphors never needed to arrow in a straight line. Um, but there are loads of interesting things coming. Like, how the hell are we going to deal with HTML5? The canvas tag. Um, is a fantastic mechanism for taking a web browser which is easy to automate and control, and I'm going to use easy in scare quotes, right? Um, and turns it into this sort of opaque thing where magic happens, and we don't really know what the hell is going on in there. Um, the video tag, how the heck are we going to test audio, for example? There are all these lovely features coming in HTML5, uh, and we have put, uh, it's a round number, um, 
no effort whatsoever into thinking about how it's going to be automated. Um, hopefully, what we're doing with the spec work will mean that other people will think about like, well, how do I prove that this thing works? And, and maybe, just maybe, testability will be in future W3C specs. But I find that deeply unlikely because we've been trying to encourage people to write tests for God knows how long. Um, and who has ever managed to voluntarily get a developer who wasn't already committed to them to write a test? <laughs> yeah, exactly, you see. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Do you, do, you, and do you want me to respond to the deprecation comment? Sure. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, this goes to what do you think is going to be in Selenium 3? So, yes, that's a very good question. What's going to be in Selenium 3? Um, the the, the kick-ass mobile piece would be nice, right? Um, we've got the web driver APIs. We've put the Selenium RC APIs into maintenance mode. So there's, no, there's not going to be any further development on it. I think Selenium 3 will break it out into a separate library um, and just have it as like Selenium Legacy. Or as I said to somebody the other day, Selenium Leg RC. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's a clever name, right? Like we're never going to delete it, but there's going to be less and less effort invested in it. Um, and it's going to be like something which people will need to consciously download rather than being something they get in the default package. But that's Selenium 3, right? When are we going to release that? Not tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Um, it's going to take a while, right? We need good, really good Safari support. Um, I think that's the, the key missing piece at the moment. There's that one last browser that, that fails to completely bow to our dark will. Um, <laughs> sorry, there are browser vendors here, aren't there? <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, yeah, so I mean, Safari is the missing piece of the puzzle. We've got a Safari driver written by Jason at the back, um, which is amazing, but it's in an extension that isn't quite there yet. Uh, and we still need to persuade Apple to allow us to release it under the Selenium uh, project name. And we're not a corporation, and it's just taking a long time. Right, sorry. Anyone else? How, how do you feel about the deprecation of Selenium? So I'll see. Give people as long as you give people plenty of time to deal with things that we want to get rid of and to have a nice orderly transition out of the building, then there will not be chaos. I think that's what we're all looking for. So. How much time is enough time? I don't know. Well, actually, one of the things <laughs> we did chat about, and we'll say this publicly, I counseled Simon on this. I don't write any code anymore, but I, I, I'm a good counselor. Uh, I counseled Simon on a really good thing that he might have, um, it did come up in the lightning talk by Mike. Um, Google is moving from Selenium 1 to Selenium 2. That's a great case study on how not to freak out about things that we're like, someday going to kill code-wise. So uh, as Google goes, so goes the world. Again, scoping into Selenium 3, whatever. But uh, don't worry about it. As long as Simon writes excellent documentation and blog posts on how to tr make the, cover the transition, I think everything will be fine. I do English good. Right. We're screwed. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Um, it seems like you're looking at breaking out all the drives into standalone executables moving forward. Have you thought about some sort of framework to enable them to easily get download, like a one-click download that will bring the latest version of all of the executables down, so you can just run them, rather than running around to all the different websites, hoping you've got the right version, and then, then plugging them into the right path? Uh, does some, anyone else want to have a go at answering this before I have an opinion? I I'm a supplier. Yes, we should have it. <laughs> and welcome to the project. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I disagree. No, we shouldn't have it. Um, yeah, you see, the what we're doing and what we're pushing really hard to do is take WebDriver and the WebDriver API um, and push that as a uh, into a W3C standard, right? So you shouldn't need to go and download a separate executable. It should be something that ships as part of the browser. And there may be some magic incantation. At that point, the, uh, if there is a standalone executable, it should be updated with whatever mechanism is used to update the browser. Right? So if you're on Windows, it'll hopefully come through Windows Update for Microsoft IE, um, for Opera. You know, it's already uh, almost, you know, there's so much of it embedded in, in Opera itself. And then you know, there's a scope protocol that, you, that we speak in. And, you know, the, the executable is basically a bridge, right? Yeah, kind of. 
<coughs> yeah, but, but the, the, still, the case is still, I mean, Opera Driver is kind of a special case here because it's shipped alongside Selenium. Um, and if we follow Simon's logic, it shouldn't really be there. But I'm personally very, very happy for it to be <laughs> shipped alongside Selenium so people don't have to go off to Google Code to download it like they have to download Chrome, uh, the Chrome driver. So, yeah, that's my take on it. Yeah. Uh, but the, then again, I mean, I don't, I, I, I don't want a library or a piece of code inside the Selenium repo to automatically download it. But at the same time, there, we, have, we have stuff like that for, for some of the libraries. Like for the like for the Ruby library, there is already an automatic clause for downloading the Selenium standalone jar. So, um, I mean, what Simon is saying is not entirely true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're we're never going to include Selenium Grid in a browser. So that kind of stuff, I would expect that's in my mind something that should have a one-click installer. I well, yeah, I mean, Selenium Grid, you download it using, I mean, loads of yeah, people. Yeah, yeah, you have to download all these things. Loads of people use this, I can't stand it, but they use Maven, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> why? <laughs> but they do, um, you know, and yeah. But, like, no Java application I'm aware of does a very good job of automatically updating itself. Um, you know, if we had something like uh, Sparkle from OS X, have you all seen Sparkle? Do you have any idea what it is? It's a little framework that uh, uh, applications can embed that allows them to do sort of, hey, there's an update. You should go and download the update, right? Um, but your tests are already slow enough as it is. And if every time you started a browser, it went, I should check to see whether there's a newer version of me, you'd all lynch us more than you do already. You don't lynch us. You're really nice. Does that actually answer the question? Is that like, who, I forget, who asked that question? Yeah. Um, does that answer it satisfactorily? No. No. I mean, I, another, solution that we could another solution that we actually could consider is, is, is following, uh, following the packaging system of different distributions. So like, <laughs> <laughs> like, like you're providing a dev repo for Debian or something. Yeah. Uh, and something for brew scripts for, uh, for well, there's OSX, a, so forth. Yeah. Like for the Chrome driver, there's only the brew script. Yeah. There's a brew, brew, brew script for Chrome driver? Yeah. That's it's awesome. Over, yeah. I should use that. Yes, you should. I go to the website and download it because, you know, I can use wget. I suppose it's, it's a wget, right? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. Or curl if you. So at the moment, we haven't put a huge <laughs> amount of thought into it, and there are differing <laughs> opinions. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, can we ask someone who hasn't had a question yet? Yeah. Um, PHP bindings for WebDriver. Yeah. PHP bindings. Um, there's a few out there, but they're kind of rough. Um, any future for that? Use the Facebook ones. And contribute to the Facebook ones. And contribute yeah. to the Facebook ones. Um, those are the what? So, like, we've. I had a had a conversation. Adam Goucher did as well. Um, I don't know if anyone else was involved in that email thread. Where we contacted the authors of the, there were like four or five different PHP bindings, and just went, you guys talk to each other, pick which one you like the best, or which one of you is happy to maintain the most, <laughs> because <laughs> it's two sides of the same coin. Um, and between them, uh, the PHP ones uh, from Facebook appeared to be the most popular and the, the ones with the most support. Um, so those are the ones that we officially bless. I think Adam Goucher has yeah. tried to layer stuff on on top of it because the, the Facebook PHP bindings are very, very close to the wire protocol, right? And the wire protocol is not really designed for user consumption, right? Um, I think what we'll see is as Facebook <coughs> write more and more web driver tests, they're going to go, we need nice things in this API and it'll flesh out. Um, and they, they also do open source pretty well, right? Um, they've open sourced a bunch of stuff. And I'm pretty sure that if you try and do a pull request, they will uh, accept your change, or at least tell you why they're not going to. But uh, I can't speak for Facebook because, well, I don't work there. I work at Google, but that's beside the point, right? Does that answer? Does anyone else want to say anything about PHP? So, for, like, 
Hmm? Not a polite company. <laughs> I'm kidding. So uh, the Facebook ones are the best ones. <clears throat> Goucher also forked it on GitHub, so check those out as well as it's going to be updated. So make your call. Yeah, go for it. I think if any of the committers point at you and no one else is talking at the moment, just quickly start going. Ah. It looks like it's. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Uh, one of the things I wanted to ask is, you know, in all the companies I've been working, I mean, there's always something for them really important, which is doing cross-browser testing. And when I've tried to come up with any kind of solution using uh, Selenium, although it might not be the main, you know, obviously the main reason of that tool, I've always failed miserably, probably because of the fact that of the things you guys have been telling the last two days, you know, about the good things of having like separated drivers, some of the drivers being executable, some of the ones, you know, jars and things like that. So do you guys see any benefit or any point in, in the future having any kind of integration with all the drivers, you know, to come with an easy tool for people to do any kind of cross-browser testing with Selenium? Was that question is there a tool for doing cross-browser testing that's like Selenium? <laughs> that was my interpretation of it, and I. No, I mean, I mean, I'm using. I'm talking about maybe using Selenium as a tool for doing cross-browser cross -browser testing by taking screenshots and things like that. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, oh yeah, Kevin. Yeah. Kevin uh, should answer this one. Sure. Um, yeah. So I. I like using Selenium, but I use it very differently. Like, I'm trying to encourage people to think differently about how they test things. So we move beyond just click, hover, type, um, all that. Uh, and I gave a, I guess, mediocre talk on this at GTAC uh, back in October. Um, so you might want to check it out. If you go to webconsistencytesting.com, I have a whole bunch of material up there uh, that I think is kind of what you're looking for. And Check it out. If you have questions, there's a mailing list, or you can contact me directly. Thank you. Did you want to add something, Jason? Yeah, I was just thinking, I think I'm confused on the def I think the definition of cross-browser testing changed, and I just realized, mm -hmm. oh, I'm working on the old definition of cross-browser testing. Before, it just meant get them to do the same thing, open, do something, and shut down. I just realized the definition has shifted to rendering differences. At the I think that's just what I just recognized. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Oh, cross browser. So that's it's more of a. Oh, so yeah. visual comparison. Visual uh, comparison is. I'm assuming that's what you meant. Yeah. I don't, is that is that actually what cross browser testing now means, or is? Or is I mean, it wouldn't be just that. Probably that mainly, but you know, sometimes maybe certain JavaScript could work differently or something when pages load or things like that. For, uh, it could. There's, there's because, but mainly it's like image you know, comparison. So there's, so there's that. There's also a little bit of a. Forgive me, I'll make this a 30 second story, I promise. A, a historical artifact of the fact that now everything's separate in all these different browser specific things. The Selenium one was everything was implemented in JavaScript. If you could do it in JavaScript, that, that was it. The Selenium server was just a dumb proxy into doing whatever JavaScript could do. I'm sorry. <laughs> that was actually. It's a really big dumb it, it proxy. It solved 80% of the problem. The last 20% actually. Um, all of the different browser specific implementations, that solves the rest of the problem. So there's, from that point of view, we're different now because that, that's actually the better architectural choice going forward to do anything. But I'm not sure if that's like, it seems like you were asking about the cross browser image aspect. Of yeah, that. I think it is. And I mean, I do agree with that. It's much better. Maybe for this other purpose, it might make it a bit more difficult. But I mean, yeah, it's always a workaround. You can do it. But yeah, thank you very much for the answer. Uh, screenshots, by the way, are an incredibly difficult problem. Um, it sounds like it should be really easy, right? I mean, all you want to do is capture a certain area of the screen, um, but you probably don't want to just capture a certain area of the screen. You'd like to get the entire page, right? Except in order to view the entire page, a user would have to scroll it. So, you know, one approach would be, uh, well, why don't we scroll it uh, and then stitch together the images? And that's great, except, oh, no, you've got absolute positioning, right? And you've got um, viewport relative positioning and things like that. So as you scroll it, bits and pieces jump up and down. And it's like those photographs where, you know, in the old days, where there'd be a like, line of people and there'd be a person at both ends, and it would be the same person. And that's because the exposure was so long, they could just run the length of it and appear at the back, right? 
So you're going, okay, well, fine. Well, what we'll do is we'll resize the window until we can fit in the entire document. And, you know, we attempt to do that with the IE driver, but it, it turns out that even if you somehow hook into the message queues, um, you still can't go above, like, 2 to the power 16 pixels high. Um, and some pages are even longer, particularly if you happen to have auto scroll um, and the infinite scrolling of Google Reader, right? And yeah, where the hell does it stop, <laughs> right? It should be, it, 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 the more you dig into this and the more people take advantage of, you know, the capabilities of the web browsers, the harder it gets to actually be able to really clearly define what it means to take a screenshot. Um, you know, so we do, uh, the documentation that we have for this represents it. Um, you know, it's like, well, we'll do what we can, right? I, we're particularly Gallic about it. We give like, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, but we will try. Uh, anyone else? Sorry, screenshots really get on my nerves. <laughs> Mainly because we've invested so much effort in it, and every time we approve <coughs> it, people go, ah, can you make it do this as well? <laughs> Spent two years trying to get the Chromium team to do it too. <laughs> <laughs> you, you know that's open source, and you could just contribute. Sorry. Question on Jenkins source on demand plugin. Uh, Ask me later. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, how does it differ from the source connect? Ask me later. Okay. Where do you see the, ma I mean, you, you were talking about HTML5 and the canvas uh, tag. Is, is there any other sort of threats you see to Selenium's ability to do what it can do in terms of people making more use of these, these new technologies, coming up with ever cleverer, ever more sophisticated ways of, well, possibly shooting themselves in the foot? Well, uh, I think that, that you know one one of the one of the big challenges we face is is actual browser vendors who haven't bought into what we're doing, not wanting us to do it. Actually, we're, we're hacking the browser, guys. I mean, that's what we're doing. We're we're making the browser do things that the user is not actually doing. We're we're faking it out. So, browser vendors that haven't bought into creating a, a driver, and that incidentally would be another reason that I wouldn't want to bundle uh, everything. For all the browser, you know, like the remote driver servers for all of the browsers in with our jar because we're a security risk, to be honest with you, because we're, we're, we're hacking the browser. So that's one, that's one threat to us being able to do what we do, is browser vendors just not wanting us to do it and trying to close off every hole that we can do to get there. Which actually happened with the Chrome driver. The, yeah. the, the Chrome driver that Daniel wrote, uh, which was Chrome driver number three, I think. <laughs> was a Chrome extension, and maybe Daniel would be best place to tell this story. Um, yeah, there, there, so I was writing that as a Chrome extension in the very early days of Chrome extensions, and um, was trying to help kind of suggest things which could be useful to, to the Chrome extension platform, because I was one of the early users, and also stuff that was useful to us. And occasionally there, there were conflicts like, it would be really useful um, to be able to access frames properly. Uh, kind of from within the context of extension, but there's a whole bunch of security concerns with frames. By the way, yeah, it's not just Canvas and new stuff. People using iframes screws up trying to automate stuff. Like, the existence of iframes, I think, is the hardest problem that we face. Um, but yeah, so it would be really useful to be able to, to access it within frames from an extension context. And that bug is, like, in the top 100 Chromium bugs, and there's, like, 20,000 now, and it's been open for about three years. No, it's quite gotten around to it. Like, like they, it, it used to work. They closed off the security hole, like the Safari driver, like the, the very old Selenium Safari uh, support, um, no longer works because Safari, like Apple, closed a security bug that we were kind of exploiting. Um, we do that quite a bit. It's kind of a game of, of, of uh, yeah. cat and mouse. <laughs> Uh, yes, I think there is uh, another challenge, like, especially with uh, mobile browsers. There are lots of gestures you can do, uh, but it's very difficult to describe them in a test, like uh, panning and uh, like flicking and things like that. And we came across that when we tried to create like the advanced user interactions API for mobile, it was very difficult to come up with a test case that you can run and say this this is worked properly or this hasn't. So I think that's another challenge. Um, yeah, uh, developers they're also a huge threat. 
they keep on doing crazy things, and then <laughs> asking their testers to solve the halting problem. Like, so many times people go, you should add to WebDriver the wait for page to load command. <laughs> and it's like, okay, you tell me how to implement that in a consistent way across every app. And they go, well, wait until all the HTML traffic is finished. And it's like, well, how long do you wait just to see whether there's some more, um, you know, because there might be an AJAX request. Oh, yeah, AJAX request. Well, wait until all the AJAX requests are finished. And you go, ah. <laughs> what if there's a, a comet style thing where you're doing constant updating? And they're going, well, yeah, I mean, wait until they're all finished except for that. And you go, <laughs> you know, and they're going, what about if there's something firing on a timer every 25 milliseconds? And I go, oh, no, 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 that will never happen. And, and sure enough, we've come across bugs where people have gone, uh, web driver doesn't type. Like, the web driver APIs don't allow me to type. And it's like, I'm pretty sure they do. <laughs> I've done some research on this matter. <laughs> I have watched the test run. I am fairly sure it does. And I walk over to their machine, and sure enough, uh, when they submit a form, it disappears. But if you're watching it, like, eagle-eyed, uh, text was being entered, and then as the form was being submitted, it was clearing. And it's like, what the hell is going on there? And in that particular case, it turned out that we were so fast that uh, this little thread, that they, the, this piece of JavaScript they had on a timer, hadn't had a chance to fire yet and update an internal model. And so I went, well, I'll return this, date, this form to what it matches the last correct form of the model, which was the empty model. So it's going, right, you've typed. I haven't seen anything. I'm returning it to the empty model and then submitting the form. And you're going, oh my god. Um, yeah, so developers. <laughs> are a huge threat to writing good, testable applications. Really, we shouldn't let them near the code base. But it's not just what, uh, uh, just not, uh, it's just not um, uh, what Jim said. Um, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't just apply for browser vendors who have bought into this. It also applies to, to the browser vendors who actually support this. Um, <laughs> Uh, I happen to work for a browser vendor, and I, am, se video, <laughs> <laughs> and I am seen as a security risk to the developers in the security team, uh, because I keep asking for all of these things, and, and, and an, an example of that is, I'm not sure if you've noticed, but it's not possible to use Opera Driver for uploading a file, and the reason for that is because I'll have a very, very angry developer standing outside my door every time I ask him to add that feature. So uh, I think we've tried to try to figure out a solution for how to do that now. Uh, so it's coming probably in the, in the next version or so. Uh, but, uh, but that's also, the, also another situation you have to consider. Um, when it comes to new, new, new content, um, HTML5, HTML5 features and so, uh, there's also, OK, so I mean, how far can we go in automating some of them? Like uh, you have the new color field, uh, which pops up the OS native uh, OS native uh, color dialog, and there's no way we're going to, t going to be able to tap into that. So uh, it's just going to be like an approximation of, of, of what we can do. Do you know what the workaround is for the Opera file upload? Robots. <laughs> <laughs> Selenium 4. Code name Terminator View. Yeah. <laughs> Skynet. Judgment Day. <laughs> That's, that's what will be lo lo when we launch it, yeah. <laughs> 4.0 will be the last ever release. <laughs> uh, anyone else? Mike. You, you said that the, the API was fairly stable. The, is there anything you, you would like to see added, apart from the HTML5 stuff, is there anything you'd like to see added to like the Java APIs? Like, there was recently some, you recently did some stuff to improve the debug error messages. Um, is there, is there anything else like that, or any extra features you'd like to see added? To them? Um, I'm sure we've all got like little pet features we'd like to see added. Do we want to go down the line and just have people go? I'd like to see that that thing where it grates cheese for you or whatever. <laughs> Anyone? I think it's Pandora's box here. Yeah, it's Pandora's <laughs> box. Um, so there's there's a real tension when doing API design between um, allowing people to do anything and having an API that a human being can comprehend, right? And we've made some choices, which may or may not be good ones. Um, and it's still panning out. Like Selenium RC, the original API, was incredibly explorable, right? You just went control space in, in your IDE, and OK, there were the better part of half a million choices. <laughs> but if you were patient enough, you could scroll through each of them, and you could see everything that you could do. With the WebDriver APIs, we took a different approach and, and used role-based interfaces. 
Um, they have the disadvantage of being not terribly discoverable, right? There isn't some way of going, hey, whoa, I can do this. Um, and so we've got the capabilities. So you can query a web driver instance. You can cast it to has capabilities in Java. Oh, look, here we go. There's a, a, an interface that nobody knows about. Um, you can ask it to describe itself, and it'll do a decent job. Um, but then, you know, how do you tie that back? And, da, 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 da. and so, like, there's that. But what are the things that... Everything that I would want to add at the moment, I would tend to add uh, as a layer on top of what's there already. So the two big ones are... Uh, I had someone on, I, on, on IM earlier today saying, I keep on getting the stale element exception. Um, I was like, hey, probably do, don't you? <laughs> um, uh, and they were going, well, how, how do I... Um, I'd, I'd like WebDriver to fix that problem for me. It's like, well, I'd like it if you wrote stable tests. I mean, we're, we're in, the, in the same boat. But it would be nice if, when there was a stale element exception, like maybe it made a sort of, okay, Last time I was found in this location on the page, I'll, I'll, I'll see whether I'm still here. Or something that looks a lot like I used to look before I was detached from the DOM and, and see whether that's there. Um, so that would be a nice feature, but I'd probably layer that on top of the existing APIs, um, but make it so that it would be easy to layer it on top. The other thing as well is latency. How many people here use source? I mean, we do, um, for our continuous build. Uh, we do, what is it, 4,000 hours a, a day? Uh, a month, I think. 4,000 hours a month. Oh. I should know that number. We should, we should check in more often. Um, <coughs> uh, and there's a huge latency gap, right? Because, as I said earlier, we put four times the internet in the way. Like, how are we going to enable people to deal with the fact that there is just a huge amount of latency? And how do we make it so the tests run quickly? And you know, maybe what we could do is package up um, WebDriver.js and allow you to shun that across the wire and have it evaluated. Um, but then you've got like mixing and match matching of languages. So, you know, developers like to pick one language and then never leave it. Like the polyglot programmer, you know, the programmer who's happy and fluent in four or five different programming languages. I, we've got some on the stage right here, right? I mean, the WebDriver code base is a mishmash of languages. But it's fairly uncommon still. Um, you know, so any approach is going to make people unhappy. Like, how do you do it? Just how do you do it? We'll figure it out one day, right? It probably involves some sort of robot. <laughs> <laughs> I actually disagree on this point. So, oh, yeah, so and as far as stuff to add, so oh, one kind of cultural historical artifact. Selenium 1, generally the answer is, oh, yeah, sure. It's a good <laughs> thing that Simon's now in charge. It's generally now the answer is no. Come back with a better reason. That's a good thing. Uh, so, with that context, there's, I mean, anything that we propose, you have to have a really good reason to do it now. However, to make just riffing on the whole latency thing, we use a very slow, chatty protocol. Here's a crazy idea I've never actually talked about publicly. Ha, ah, ta da. Um, let's throw away HTTP and actually go with a really fast binary protocol like Thrift or Protocol Buffers or something like that. Crazy, ridiculous idea, but default answer is no way. <laughs> and I don't want to screw up the whole uh, meeting. So, um, <laughs> thing. so um, there are things that I want to see, but like, hey, why don't you just go fork it, try it, show us, and then maybe. <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting you mentioned that. The web driver spec, the W3C one, doesn't mention HTTP. There is a non-normative section of a mapping of the commands to HTTP and URLs uh, and JSON, but it's non-normative. Mm. Um, the reason for that is far more practical than JSON just invented something. Um, it's that Opera already don't use uh, HTTP and JSON. They use scope and, uh, and, and <laughs> protocol. Buttons. I'm always one step behind people, so hi. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's always VR who one step ahead of you. <laughs> That's all right. I was ahead of both of you. No, I wasn't. I was blindsided by it. Oh, well, who knows? Safari uses WebSockets as well. So Safari uses WebSockets. Web sockets. Yeah. Uh, I guess. I guess at some point someone's going to use Speedy, which is great until you're on a mobile link. Speedy over mobile. I've had terrible experiences with, but maybe I'm just lucky. <coughs> Anyone um, else? I have a pet feature, but it's never. It's 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 not a web driver feature. Okay. Uh, or a, a Selenium feature. I would I would like to be able to. 
enable someone, I'm not going to say who it would be, to build a library to handle native dialogues that are spawned by a browser. Right now, we don't. There's no way to do that with WebDriver. Um, yeah. You know, like for example, file downloads. Who wants to do file downloads with WebDriver? This guy can do it, maybe. Who wants to handle uh, 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 NTFS login using uh, WebDriver? Yeah, I see a couple of hands up. Yeah, that kind of thing. Security <laughs> dialogues, those kinds of things would be nice to be able to, to do. But yeah, that's a thorny problem, like it is. Because we have to, I, I, want to, I want to expose it in a way that doesn't let people be evil. Let me put it that way. Yeah. That's what I want. Yeah. yeah. Good. Jason. Comment, and then we're really ending the conference because we're out of time. Ah. So uh, the water project, there was a sister project that actually was called Sister. Uh, S-Y-S-T-I-R, brilliant name, whoever came up with that. I don't know what happened to it. We should talk about it over beers. But that was a parallel project that dealt nothing with nothing else except for all the native yeah. widgets. So yeah. I would love to have a sister project, a web driver called Desktop Driver. Yeah. I don't know. And then that's how you'd solve it. And now we're done. Right. Oh, I've got Let's one see. question. Um, does anyone know where the conference is going to be? Oh, sorry, Andreas. We already have a thing called the Opera Desktop. Man! Of course you do! <laughs> Which you can uh, interact with dialogues. Of course you do. It solves okay. problems. Yes. Uh, so, does anyone know where the conference is going to be next year? Miami. Austin, Texas. Austin, Texas. New York. Hawaii. London. No, it's not going to be London. Oh, like, it's on the Hawaii. Yeah. Hawaii sounds really good. <laughs> Where else it is? Okay, um, I think there's. Pro I think we will have to argue this one out because uh, did did anyone who call out those those place names uh, volunteer to lead the organization of the, of that conference? I'll in the lead place? one in Hawaii. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> if I need to go for six months. Yeah, we'll take we'll take care of my ass. Okay, you, know, you two just duke it out later, and whichever one of you has the most teeth at the end of the evening. Okay. <laughs> Thunderdome. Cool. Um, closing. We should wrap this one up, shouldn't we? Yeah. Unless you're happy to stay here. No, we should wrap it up. It's almost six o'clock. You guys have been fantastic. Um, I've had a great, great three days. Um, I was at the workshops, obviously. Uh, I hope some of you have had a great two days. Um, we should say one last thank you to our sponsors who uh, have helped make this possible. Uh, the Selenium level ones were Source Labs and so 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 Sosta? Sosta. Sosta. I always used to say Soasta. It's like, you know, I used to say Najavo as well. And uh, uh, yeah, I couldn't pronounce the word fajita until someone pointed it out to me. Um, so yes, uh, Source Labs and Sosta. Uh, the platinum level sponsors were Facebook, Google, SQS, W3QA. Uh, the gold level ones, according to this, were Thinksys uh, and eBay and TFT and Conquer. Um, and also, thank you to Mogo uh, for helping make this conference happen. Um, thank you all of you for being here. It's been a real honor and it's been a real pleasure. Um, and we'll see you all next year. I'm out of here. <laughs> the, big, the biggest problem that we have...